Come on, our God is worthy to be praised. I said our God is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on, for about 30 seconds, give him your best hand clap. And as you're giving him your best hand clap, open up your mouth and give him the highest praise. What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you so much. Better is here. Better is coming. Bigger is here. And bigger is yet coming. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about let him that hath an ear, let him what? Hear or her. But, but we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and not just think, well, that's only a natural thing. No, we have to allow the Spirit of God to help us to hear what it is that the Lord is saying unto us. Because some of y'all have some concerns. Some of y'all have been putting things before God in prayer. And you earnestly want to hear from him so that you can obey him. So that you don't get out of his will. Now in order to do it, you have to not just uh, again hear the word from the standpoint of just I'm, I'm hearing it with my natural ears. But as saints of the Most High God, we have to allow the Holy Spirit, who is the Comforter, who is the one sent to lead or to guide us into all truth. We have to allow him to help us to not just hear, but to grasp what it is that God is saying to us. Because sometimes you can pray about a thing and then God can speak your answer through your pastor or through someone, but because you don't have an ear to hear, you miss what it is that God was trying to say to you. Amen. And, and so, and so this morning, um, I really need us to pay attention. I really need us to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church, uh, unto God's people. Amen. It's going to be so important this morning. I need y'all to hang on every word that the Holy Spirit is going to give me on this morning because it's going to prove important for a lot of us. Amen. Notice, notice Psalm 62. Again, Psalm 62. Psalm 62, verse number 8. 
And then we're going to turn to Isaiah 54. But notice Psalm 62 and verse number 8 simply says trust. Notice again, he said trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. Notice what he says about God. God is a refuge for us. He is a refuge for us. And certainly we know in the times we live, that's comforting uh, to know that God is our refuge. In times such as these, we have a refuge. Oh, Lord. I said we have a refuge. Everybody don't have one. We have a refuge. But notice when David, the psalmist says, trust in him. He's plain. That when it comes to trusting God, trust simply means to rely upon, to have faith in, to have confidence in, to depend upon. Notice, he wants the saints to receive that there's never a time that we should distrust God. There's never a time that we should doubt God. That's when he told us uh, for a couple of weeks to divorce doubt. Why? Because there's never a time that we should fail to trust God. Again, he says, trust him at what? All times. Trust him no matter what's going on. Trust him no matter what it looks like. Trust him no matter what it sounds like. Come on. Trust him no matter what it feels like. Trust him at all what? Times. So there's never a time where I shouldn't trust God. Amen. Are y'all with me? I should trust him at what? At all times. Should I trust pastor at all times? No. Because pastor is not who? God. We are to trust God at what? All times. And we don't ever want to be found not trusting him. You don't ever want to go through something and know that you don't trust God the way you need to. Because again, David is plain. Trust him or God at all times. Notice Isaiah 54. Notice Isaiah 54. Trust him at, at, at all times. Trust him at all times. You can rely on God at all times. You can depend on God at all times. Notice Isaiah 54 in verse number 17. Notice what the prophet Isaiah says. Being led by God. Isaiah says in Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you. In judgment you shall condemn. Watch this. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Note, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Maybe two of them. Maybe one. Maybe a half of a weapon. He said, no weapon, watch, that is formed against you shall prosper. And then he closes by saying, this is a part of your heritage. This is a part of your heritage. That when it comes to your life, no weapon formed against you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Listen. But weapons will form. It's just my heritage or my inheritance given to me from my father that when they form, they won't prosper. See that? See, so I, I need to make it personal. That's my heritage. That's my heritage. Now listen, they are formed, but they won't prosper. David said, trust him at all times. Based upon that, look at somebody and tell them the subject this morning. Trust God when weapons form against you. Mm, tell somebody, trust God when weapons form against you. Tell somebody else the subject. Come on, let's give him a thunderous hand to praise. Trust God when weapons form against you. And so the Lord is really going to help us today. He's going to really speak to us today. 
There are some things taking place that his people need, need answers. They need directions. And a lot is being said, but what, what's coming from, from God. And so notice when, when we deal with the word formed, to form is to fashion or to create something. When you form a thing, again, you fashion it or you create it. You often see this taking place in scriptures when it comes to the potter. How the potter takes the clay and he forms a vessel. He fashions it or he creates it. And so it's important to understand that weapons will be formed against God's people. In other words, they're going to be fashioned or created. Oh, some things are not by accident. They have been fashioned. They have been created to come against people who trust in the Lord. Why is that important? It's important that we understand that when it comes to weapons forming, weapons can form against us, number one, from an individual standpoint. See, see, there are times that we go through things and the weapons that are forming against us are, if you will, personal attacks. Things that have been created or fashioned in order to come against us, but, but it's fighting us, if you will, from an individual standpoint. I, I don't know if you've ever battled things like, like I've battled before, but, but I've often had to deal with things and, and, and there was really no way to explain to certain people what it was that I was battling. Now, I, I don't know if you've ever went to sleep with, with the Lord on your mind. I, I mean, just giving him the praise, the glory, and the honor for all that he has done all that he's doing and going to do but then sometime late 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 over in the midnight hour you have a dream that's not of God you 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 have a dream that you know was not sent by God but this dream came in order to torment you this dream came in order to get you to be fearful about something that was taking place in your life and a lot of us when we awoke having to deal with this dream we didn't immediately wake up certain people trying to explain to them from A to Z what was happening in the dream we recognized that that, that was a weapon that, that the enemy was trying to use against our mind to bring us into captivity and so some things are just an individual battle I, I've got to defeat this just trusting trusting God I, oh can I get a witness I may not be able to call my prayer partner concerning this because it's going to be hard to explain because two or three days later I've forgotten the whole dream I know bits and pieces but yet I know that it was not of God anybody ever been there before and so there are individual battles that we go through but, but don't get it twisted there are things that form against us and they're coming at our family they're, they're coming at our household and, and, and so it's weapons that have been created that coming against the house it may be coming against the marriage it may be a weapon form that is attacking your children are you hearing what I'm saying but then at the same time we have to consider that weapon form against the church and so there are weapons that will be created or fashion that will try to come against the household of faith in other words we go through things as a body whether you recognize it or not there are some attacks that are unleashed by the enemy is trying to tear down the church but I love what Jesus said I love the fact of the truth that he knew things would come against his church and therefore he said about the church that the gates of hell shall not prevail watch this against my church now he just told me something he told me indirectly that every church is not not his church he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church and so I better make sure that I'm in God's church and that I'm not caught in man's church I don't want no part of man's church 
Oh, I'm preaching right already. I want to be a part of the church that even when the gates of hell come against it, it shall not prosper. It is going to be created. It is going to be formed, but it will not prosper. Oh, can I teach it right? Sadly, weapons form and prosper because we fail to trust God. Sadly, sometimes weapons form and they prosper because we fail to trust God the way that we need to. Trust being obey. I said trust being obey. Because the evidence that you trust God is found in your obedience, watch this, to the God that you say you trust. Don't tell me you trust God, but you don't obey God. No, if you truly trust God, you're going to obey him no matter what. Come on, somebody, because that's how you trust him. That's the relationship that you built with him, that you trust him at all times. You trust him no matter what. But again, sadly, in the church, among people who claim to love God and probably do, but weapons form and they prosper because people don't trust God the way they need to. See, understand when the Lord says through Isaiah that no weapon formed against you will prosper. We have to understand weapon forming but not prospering is contingent upon our faith, our trust, or our obedience. I want to say that again. Weapons forming but not prospering is contingent upon our faith, our trust, or our obedience to our God. Do you get it? Isaiah 1 and 19. If you're willing, come on, and obedient, you'll eat what? The good of the land. So how I eat is contingent upon my willingness and my obedience. Oh, Lord. See, some folks are not eating good. And it's not because God don't want them to eat good. They got to recognize that they're not willing and obedient. And so it's hindering how you eat. Oh, come on. It's hindering how you live. Because eat is used figurative of a person's life. And sometimes we don't understand that to receive the promises of God in the way that he wants us to receive them, we have to be obedient. We have to put our trust in him. Now understand, weapons form. But when they form against us, understand this right here. When weapons start forming against you, whether it's individual, whether it's your family or the church, you have to be decisive and deliberate when it comes to your choices. You have to be decisive and deliberate when it comes to your choice. I, I know weapons are forming. They're being created. But when it comes to my choices, I need to be, number one, decisive. In other words, when I make choices that I know are of God, I don't need to hesitate. Ooh, I don't need to hesitate in doing what God would have for me to do. I need to be decisive. I need to be deliberate. Deliberate has to do with being intentional. The choices that I'm making, I'm making that I can reap a certain result. So I'm deliberate in what I'm choosing to do. Oh, God, finna help us now. I said I'm decisive and I'm deliberate. But this decisiveness and being deliberate is not of self. It comes from what God would have watched it for me to do and what he would have for me not to do. Come on. So when you're decisive and deliberate, you need a do and don't list. I say you need a do and don't list. Which means there are things that I know I got to do. I know I got to trust God. I know I have to be obedient. But then there are things that I, I don't need to do. Because God has told me, whatever you do, don't do this. And so that has to go on my don't list. Are y'all listening? 
Because some of us, when weapons start forming, we are not decisive. We are not deliberate because of the spirit of fear. We're not decisive. We're not deliberate because we worry too much. Come on. And if you've ever worried about something, you could be honest saying that in worrying, you were back and forth. You were back and forth. Some days you knew what you needed to do. The next day, you, you didn't know if you should have did that or not. One minute you're saying you did something because God told you to do it. But then you turn right back around and you're worried that what God told you to do that you did is going to backfire on you. How can what God tell you to do backfire on you? Come on. But when you worry, listen, it says about you that your mind is broken. See, a mind that consistently worries it a, is a broken or shattered mind. That means your mind is everywhere. Come on, think about the time that you worried about something. Your mind was everywhere in reference to that thing. You wasn't even in control of your thoughts. How can I take care of this problem? Oh, Lord. Some of us have been there. We trying to act like we born with money. No, I've had thoughts that I couldn't believe came to my mind. But it was a result of worrying. I'm letting this get to me and control my mind. When God says be still and know that I am God. Listen, you got to be decisive. Don't hesitate. Don't make a move until he tells you the move that you need to make. No matter what your cousin is doing. Come on. You know God told you to be still. Don't be anxious. Come on, be decisive when it comes to being still. Be deliberate in your choice not to do something that you know you can do. Come on. He said be still. He didn't say go get along, even though you got excellent credit and all you got to do is sign for it. But you're going to be deliberate in not moving because that's what he told you. Don't you try to work it out. Don't you try to fix it. You wait till I give you instruction. So you stand still, which in a military term means you stand down. But pastor, I got an Uzi. Put the Uzi up and stand down. Pastor, I'm smart. I know. Stand down. When you able to do it, it is because you are decisive and deliberate. Y'all got y'all got to hang in here now because there's some stuff going on that's causing saints to be to be tossed. This is what the Holy Spirit dealt with me about. Things that are taking place and saints are being in one sense manipulated. See, for years, different people have tried to use the church as pawns. Some of you don't know nothing about chess, but a pawn is a piece that, that, that you can sacrifice. It really don't mean much. You sacrifice it, oh God help us, for a higher agenda. And see, sometimes people have taken the Christian beliefs and try to use Christian folk as they pawns. To father their political ideas. To, to father their power. And often the church has been caught without any clear direction. Just being used. I told you the Holy Spirit going to talk. But see that can't be with us. We got to so clearly hear from him. That the decisions we make. We know why we're making them. We know why we're doing what we're doing. We're not doing what we're doing because of what the media is saying. Amen. Come on. Amen. What the scientists are saying. Because you don't want to be anybody's pawn. I don't know if some of you seen it, but there was a movie years ago called The Book of Eli. And a lot of you remember the movie for, for different things. But this is what caught me about the movie was that in the movie there was a man, an evil man, an intelligent man who wanted a Bible. Listen to me, saints. He wanted the word of God not to do it. 
but to use it against people to manipulate their mind. And see, there are people who try to use the scriptures against saints because they have studied the word and they know how you think. And so they believe if they attach certain things with certain things, then you're automatically going to feel this way. Just like some of you, you wouldn't take change from a store if the change they was giving you was $6.66. Because, see, you have been programmed that that's an antichrist. But, see, you are being manipulated. You wouldn't stay in a room that was on the sixth floor and your room was number 66. They got to give you another room. They say that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Because they saying if you don't have it, you can't buy and eventually you can't sell. So y'all Christians need to run from it based upon that. But see, if I'm not mistaken, you can't buy NBJs without a membership. But it ain't got nothing to do with the Antichrist. They're trying to use scriptures to manipulate people. See, whether you take the vaccine or don't take it should be solely based upon what God tells you to do. You should be decisive. You should be deliberate. But you shouldn't necessarily let a man take your job if God gave you that job. Be careful. Because again, they know how you think. Thank you for watching the Making People Productive broadcast with Pastor Leonard D. Cochran of A Place of Refuge, Noonan. To order your copy of today's message, please call the church office at 770-252-3855 and reference the message number listed below. We want to hear from you. If you have been helped, strengthened, or encouraged by the word, let us know. Also, don't forget to connect with us on all of our major social media platforms to receive exclusive information and updates with all things Refuge Noonan. A Place of Refuge Noonan is located in the city of Noonan, Georgia. If you would like to visit us, our worship times are every Sunday at 1015 a.m. on location and live at 1045 a.m. We also have service every Wednesday at 715 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube Live.